All right, let's take a look at something here as far as the osteoporosis goes because there's been quite a few studies. If you look at this one, we can reverse osteoporosis 100%. 100% if we go about it in the correct way. And one of those is making sure that the, the body, and therefore the bones, get the correct ionic organic minerals. And that's what this little chart is showing you here. This is a, uh, a graph of ladies that have been given what we call rock calcium, which is simply inorganic meaning it doesn't have an electrical charge. This is what you get in Tums and the rest of it. You, you could eat your Tums, you could eat the sidewalk, you could eat a rock out there on the street. It's the same stuff. It's inorganic calcium or minerals. Now, you also notice on here that if we give those same, uh, the same group of ladies the ionic coral minerals, then they actually begin to reverse the osteoporosis. If we don't give them anything and allow them to live their acidic lives, then the osteoporosis is going to get worse. So again, we can reverse this. Everybody is worried about obesity, fat, everything else. If I could just get a penny on every diet book that is out there, I would be a very rich man. But this is the way it works. You can't lose fat weight if you're acidic. Now what we're looking at here is not a bee honeycomb. Okay? You're looking at what's called adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is where the body stores fat. Okay? We call it lipids. Now if you look at this, you'll see that there's certain little pictures in here that go along with it. The LI, a lipid. That is where it is storing that particular fat. We need fat in our diet. We use it for a whole bunch of stuff. Okay? And cholesterol too. If we eat a little more of the fats, then our body uses, then it's going to turn it into lipid and it's going to store it in the adipose tissue. Which is just fine because it's really easy broken down and if we go out and we run a mile or whatever exercise, it can break this down very easily and burn it for energy like it's intended to. But if we don't burn it for energy and it just kind of accumulates there, okay, then it is going to, it's a perfect place to store toxins and acids that are coming around the body toxins like heavy metals, some of the preservatives in our foods. It's going to hurt the body so we stick it in the fat. But it changes the fat. It changes it from a nice white lipid to a yellow fat form and then eventually to cellulite. And any lady out there can tell you that cellulite is really difficult to get rid of because the body won't let you. That's full of toxins. And if you were to go on a massive diet and so you got down into the, the point where you were actually getting rid of the fat that's in the cellulite, you would release those very poisonous toxins into the blood and it could easily kill you. So the body hangs on to it for dear life. But if you become alkaline, the body doesn't want that extra fluff. It doesn't need it. And so it's going to reverse this process. It's going to go from cellulite to yellow fat to white fat. We break that down, we burn it, we use it for energy, and we're all in the, uh, the condition and shape that we're supposed to be in. Again, you can't lose fat weight unless you are alkaline. You can lose water weight, you can actually break down your muscles, you can do a lot of detrimental things, but you can't lose fat weight. All right, let's take a look at something else. I talked a little bit about toxins, mentioned that they might be uh, preservatives in foods or mercury or, or lead or, or other things that we're involved with. You ladies that put those emollients on your skin, you know, after the shower or the rest of it, because you need to be moisturized and you need to exfoliate and you need to be pretty. Look at the labels on there. If you can't pronounce what's in that product, then it is a toxin and it's detrimental to you. I don't care what it makes you feel like and your skin is nice and soft. Because everything that goes on the skin is going to go into the bloodstream and if it's too much for the liver to handle to detoxify it, it gets stored in the fat. Now what I have as a picture here is different toxins that are around the body. The body's gone through a toxin dump. Okay? You call it detoxifying, which we have to go through every so often in order to uh, function correctly and to clean our liver out. 
Uh, there hasn't been any studies really about which one of these is which. I mean, one of these could be lead, like I said, or it could be the, anything, the preservatives in food, the lead, the arsenic that you take in in your water. I know, it, whatever it is, it's toxic. And this is what it looks like in the blood. And it changes the blood tremendously. It makes it extremely acidic, right down in that very, very 7.3 uh, level area of things. Okay, what else can, uh, if you're acidic, what else can happen detrimentally? Well, here's a picture of an artery, see the thick walls on there, and a vein right next to it, the thin walls. Have you ever heard of venial sclerosis? No, it doesn't exist. It's arterial sclerosis, isn't it? Hardening of the arteries. Well, this is what happens. You see that muscular layer that's there, and on the inside of it, there is a membrane. And as years go by, and acidic blood is passing through there, just like anything, it digests it. If you drop a hydrochloric acid on the palm of your hand, it'll eat right through there. Well, the same kind of thing takes place within the body. And so now what happens is, as, as acid blood passes through the arteries, it begins to eat away the membrane, and the membrane begins to crack. And the body says, wait a minute. If this cracks anymore, I'm going to have a blowout, an aneurysm. And so it takes its body's plug, its glue, and it sticks it in those cracks, cholesterol. Unfortunately, if cholesterol is allowed to remain there any length of time, it begins to harden and to plaque, and then we have hardening of the arteries. Again, you can reverse this. When you get the body alkaline and give it the nutrients that it's supposed to have, it's like sending those arteries to the gym. They get stronger, they get thicker, they become more flexible. Okay. Only if you're alkaline. Another factor, <clears throat> if you're acidic. If you change the water in your gold uh, fish bowl lately, this is, <laughs> what has this got to do with it? Well, quite frankly, your body is 70% water, okay? 70% water. Now, you have to think of your 76 trillion little cells in there as 76 trillion goldfish. Now, when my daughter was growing up, we went through a lot of goldfish. There's a lot of goldfish that got flushed because she couldn't get the simple concept that you had to change the water. Give it clean water and things work well. It's the same with all 76 trillion cells that you have in here. You have to replace that with clean water you know, every so often or you're going to have a major buildup of metabolic waste. And again, that drops the acidity level and a lot of different things happen. But one of the big things that happen is dehydration. Now, I do a lot of work with, with sportsmen and with athletics. And I know, and this is easy to see, that the body's 70%. But if we lose 2% of the water out of our bodies, just 2%, we're down to 68 now, then your body is going to begin to feel fatigued. Think about the last time you were in an athletic contest, and it got to be about half time. Okay? You're really dragging. All right, what happens if the body drops below that uh, to the 60%? We take out 10%. Well, now what takes place is that you start having mental confusion. Have you ever driven from A to B and have no clue how you got there? The chances are good <laughs> that you've worked all day long, you haven't taken enough fluids in, and you really are becoming mentally confused and depressed. You can't focus very well. Well, when you drop below that 10%, now the whole body is, stops functioning. The organs start shutting down or only running on survival mode. So it's extremely important that you keep the body hydrated. Now, I'll be coming back to this in a little bit later. So keep this portion in mind with things, especially that sports drinks do not replace water. Only water and fresh squeezed or fresh types of uh, fruit juices replace water within the body. Okay? Exchange that clean water and for your goldfish. Now a well-known close person to me has spent about 15 years coming up with his philosophy. <laughs> and that philosophy is very simple. There are two bottom lines to good health. The first one is that the body's pH has got to be alkaline. Some place between 7, 7.4 is perfect. But more importantly, you must provide the body 
with a continuous supply of ionic organic minerals. Now obviously these two are together, but people don't realize those. And so either one of those is going to create very disease-causing conditions and your health is going to crash.